everybody, it's Brandy. I'm Brandy Colborn with Brushed by Brandy. And I'm here tonight to go live with you guys. I've been gone for a while and so I'm feeling like a little bit out of sorts. I just posted my first piece. We went on vacation. Um, I taught at the Dixie Bell Paint Conference in Florida. Um, my kids have been sick, so a lot of stuff going on. We've been working on our house. We just, um, we built a new house this last year and me and my husband are doing the finish work ourselves. So we've been working on that. So a lot of stuff going on um, lately, but I haven't been painting with you guys for a month. It's been a month, um, which seems crazy. So when I left last month, we finished off our last piece. Um, I've been doing start to finish tutorials with you guys, which means that every week we do a different step together. Um, and then by the end, we finish up the piece and you guys have a start to finish tutorial of doing the same piece live. Um, so you can see all the way through how I get to a finish. So we are starting a brand new piece tonight. When I left last month, we finished off the piece that I had going. So we're at a nice clean start um, in my first live in a month. Come on and let me know. Uh, you guys can see me okay. Um, I also wanna let you guys know that I'm hearing you guys um, reading your comments on YouTube and everything. And so we're trying out um, my husband's cell phone tonight. So I'm trying different fixes to get you guys better video clarity. Um, also understanding that I live in a rural area and our Wi-Fi single signal is just not great. So let me know if it's any clearer tonight. I definitely appreciate the feedback. My husband Sean is here tonight to answer any questions for you guys. And we are going to be giving away paint tonight. Of course, you can't watch a Dixie Bell Live and not give away paint, right? So we are going to be giving away an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint. If you guys like my page at Brushed by Brandy, share this video and then let me know you've shared it and you'll be entered to win an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint at the end of this broadcast. Um, so feel free tonight to come on in and ask me any questions. My husband, Sean, is here to answer questions and give me feedback. Um, and let's see, so here's the piece we're gonna be working on. And I expect this will probably take us three or four weeks to complete if we do a couple steps at each live. Um, and my commitment to you guys is I won't work on this without doing this step on camera. Uh-oh. Sheila says, show me. <laughs> she wants me to show her on my hand. <laughs> I'm hoping I don't have to. Know, that's the whole transitional but, but phase. But now they're all going to miss seeing your hand. Yeah, that's <laughs> like great. The, the infamous hand. Right? Like shadow puppets. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so we're hoping to get rid of Sean's hand. No offense. What? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the piece we're going to be working on tonight. And I chose this one because, again, it's a great size to work with on camera. Um, and number two, this has a couple steps involved in the prep of it, in the preparation of it, that will be different than what we've done before. Um, so what I'm going to start with tonight, what I usually start with, is I'm actually going to strip this top. And if Sean wants to come over here for a second, I'm what if I don't? Why? <laughs> Do you have other plans? <laughs> Very busy. Sorry, I don't mean to bother you. But I want to show the condition of this top. This is what impacts my decision to strip this top. It's in really poor condition. Like I can take my fingernail and scrape off this existing finish. It's chippy, it's scratched, it has dings in it. If I was going to paint this top, it would take me, I mean, probably just as long to just sand this to a smooth finish. Um, Dixie Belle paint doesn't require that you sand, but your finish is only gonna be as good as your piece is. So, if I paint on top of this, my paint is going on to an uneven, chippy surface in bad condition, and I want a clean, smooth paint finish. So I could either sand this smooth to get it to where it's, you know, gonna look good under a coat of paint, but it's probably gonna take me just as long. So that's why you'll find, I, I tend to strip a lot of tops on my piece, and sometimes it's just because I want a wood top, but other times it's because it's just in really bad shape and sometimes stripping it is just easier than sanding this for hours. So you guys have seen me do this step on camera before. We're gonna do it again. I do this a lot. I'm gonna try to cut out all the stuff in the background on that side of the room. I should be using um, gloves. This stuff will burn your skin. I use a harsh chemical stripper when I wanna strip off a clear coat. So I'm using Clean Strip, Jasco, um, I don't like citrus strip for this because it's not harsh enough. It just takes too long. So citrus strip is great for small details and stripping a coat of paint, but it doesn't take off a, a lacquer finish very well. I'm just taking a chip brush. I just spread this all over the top of my piece and I'm just going to spread this around. I do the stripping on my pieces first because 
I don't want to accidentally drip stripper down the front of my piece or the side of my piece and then have to fix that if I chose to paint it first. So I do my stripping first. Can you do me a qu uh, quick favor? Yes, sir. The curtain behind you, can you shut it? Yes. Somebody had the idea that maybe the blinds are, the horizontal lines are messing everything up. Yeah, and it starts to get blurry. which is my workspace um, but it does have windows because it's on the front of my house so it has windows decoratively um, so that's what you guys see on the on another note it's a gorgeous day in California I'm in Sacramento and we've had excellent weather but I know you guys in like you know the center of the country the Midwest I know you guys are getting nailed with snow and rain right now so Hope I can share some California sunshine with you guys today, and I hope at least you can sit in your house and watch painting videos. All right, I'm gonna throw the hand in there. Oh no. Yep. Okay, so here's the deal, you guys. I have a self, a great cell phone. It's not that old. My husband has one model newer than I do, and so we're trying his tonight um, because I'm trying to decide whether I, I have an Android, whether I stay with an Android phone or do I try the iPhone. And my hesitance to try the iPhone is I run my whole business from my cell phone and switching to an iPhone would mean, would throw me off my roll. I'd have to learn a whole lot of new stuff. Okay, so I've got pretty good coverage here. I've worked this around a little bit. You can see it starts drying. I'm gonna spread some of this from the center over here. So what is it that you're uh, using? So I'm using a chip brush and I'm just applying a chemical stripper to the top of this piece. The only reason I'm doing that is because it was in such poor condition that this clear coat, if I was gonna paint it, I would have to get it smooth. It would take me so long to sand this clear coat smooth, I might as well just take the clear coat off. So that's why I'm choosing to do this. You do not have to do this to um, use Dixie Belle paint, but because I'm doing these start to finish tutorials with you guys, I want you to, I'm not doing this at all because my paint requires it, but on this piece, I'm evaluating it and deciding that the top is too damaged. I don't even want to try to save it. So I can already tell this has started to work. It starts kind of, I don't know, you can tell it's kind of drying. It starts looking different than over here. So I'm going to go ahead and take just a, um, what is this, a three inch scraper. Um, I like a nice wide blade. And but it's also a firm, so it doesn't, yep, it's, it's not thick enough or thin enough to bend. I'm just going to this clear coat off. Like I said, I do this first because I don't, and you should wear gloves because if you get this on your skin, it will burn. I've burned myself quite a few times. Make sure you're using it in a well ventilated area. Because it does, this is very strong odor. This is heavy chemical stuff. This is, this is the part I hate doing, but I wanted to show it to you guys because it is going to be part of this finish. It's part of preparing this piece to be beautiful. Now, I also like this process because it exposes the wood underneath. So this piece I can tell right away is mahogany. I'm no expert in um, wood species, but mahogany is pretty easily recognizable. It's this fiery red color. Um, and that is what's gonna make the prep on this piece a little bit different. Mahogany is notorious for bleeding through paint. So when I prepare this, I am going to seal it with a coat of Dixie Belle Boss. And Boss is an, a stain and an odor blocking primer. So I wanna close off the, um, the wood on this so that these wood tannins cannot bleed through <laughs> my paint coat. You guys having fun over there without me? I'm sorry. <laughs> so Carry I, on. I can't see the comments. I can only guess what you guys are saying. Sean only shares the really good ones with me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. By the really good ones, I mean the ones that are complimentary to him are usually what I hear. So then once I've scraped this all, I'm going to take, um, I usually just take a piece of cardboard from my recycling. A pizza box. <laughs> now I'm hungry. It's not an advertisement, you guys. This is a pizza box. And I'm just going to scrape it towards the back because I don't want this gunk to drip down the front of my piece. I'm not scraping hard. I'm just using the blade to move this because I'm going against the wood grain. So I'm just using it to push this off, not scraping. And I'm gonna scrape this gunk off the back onto this cardboard. And then I will just discard it. 
And then from here, my top is nice and clean. So Debbie wants to know how uh, your conference went. Oh my gosh, Debbie. <laughs> it was an experience that I am so glad that I have. It was absolutely exhausting. It was like nothing I've ever done before. And I, you know, it was weird because at the end, I was so sad it was over and so happy it was over all at the same time. So I value that experience so much. I got to meet so many people, all of my girl crushes, Tracy from Tracy's Fancy, Stephanie Kuhn of Rehab to Fab. I got to see these people in person, you guys, take pictures with them. Like I was geeking out. Um, you know, uh, Du Dodson, um, Dustin Van Fleet. I mean, oh, it was it was amazing. I got to meet so many of you guys, so many of the Dixie Bell retailers that come on and support our lives and um, that I've talked to so much, but I'd never seen them in person. I got to meet Suzanne, the owner of Dixie Bell, the founder of Dixie Bell, and Terry. Um, and I want to say something while I'm on, you guys. I'm going to give a shout out to Dixie Bell right here. So Dixie Bell does an excellent job as I hold the skunk in my hand. By the way, people love that you're using a pizza box. <laughs> whatever. It's going hey, to the garbage. Exactly. Right? So I'm going to use whatever's on hand. Let me set this down really quick. Um, so then I'm, I'm going to mistakenly gonna... eat it. <laughs> well, it's not going in the kitchen, don't worry. Um... I wanna, I'm going to come down here now, and I'm going to give a shout out to Dixie Bell because I learned a lot at the conference, and one of them is Dixie Bell does a great job of not only providing us with a line of paint to use, but also making these videos and putting a team together to teach you guys how to use the products. Um, and I learned that the group of us that represent Dixie Bell, we represent Dixie Bell because Dixie Bell represents us. Dixie Bell is that small business that came up from nothing and has made a name for itself and has a great reputation and they have a team that's like a family. Um, so I work for a great company. That's what I wanna say about Dixie Bell. And you guys use a great line of paint. So Suzanne and Terry were awesome to me. All the retailers were awesome to me. I loved the experience, but it was exhausting. So once I've stripped this top down, it's super gunky. Do you see what I mean where you can drip this down the front of this piece? I want to clean this off because I don't want that drip to go any further. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and run this edge. I'm going to come back and sand all this smooth once it dries. I can't do it while that stripper is wet. Um, okay, but now my top is, is done and I know I'm not going to drip any stripper down the front of it. So now I can deal with the body of my piece. I'm going to sand with my sander. I will start with an 80 grit sandpaper. Move to a 120 and then to a 220. Um, and that gives me a nice smooth finish for my wood stain top. We'll do that on camera. So now I'm gonna move down here to the body. So like I said, this body is mahogany. Anytime you see a piece that's got these poles on it, these are kind of a dead giveaway that you need to seal your piece. If you, I, I mean, every single time these poles, this style right here, which is a very common style. It's a Duncan Fife with the curve on the front of it. And these are called Heppel white poles. Um, anytime you see this style, you need to seal it. It will bleed every time. Um, Yay, so. the booty scooter is back. Yep. Woo. <laughs> hey, you guys, my husband's been working on the floor, on our floors in our house. Too. Did you guys oh, see he man. Has he has knee scooters too. They're like knee pads, but they're like roller skates. They're those are called, sweet. What are they called? They're called knee blades, right? Knee blades. Yeah, knee, yeah, so those are, if you think this is hilarious, you should And the knee that. pad is gel padded. Yeah, it, it's really nice. So I'm going to go through. The first thing I'm going to do is take all my poles off. And I left my container for my hardware. Way, Way the over box. there. So like I said, I've said this before, every time I take cardboard off, I grab one of these dishes and it goes right into the dish. I'm going to show you guys something looking at this hardware. I hope you can see it on camera. There is a finish on these poles that's going to scrape off. It's like a, I don't know, like a plasticky coating on here. Underneath here is this steel color, but it's got this faux brass finish on it. So when I soak this overnight in vinegar, white vinegar and water, this all is gonna just dissolve off. These poles are gonna come out silver. Let me get this 
You know, you're kind of in my way. Oh, sorry, you don't want to see the back of my head? That's my, that's my good side. Trust me. Um, so you guys, the finish that I've chosen on this piece, I will talk to you guys a little bit more about, but um, if you look at the front of this piece, it's fairly simple. It's got nice flat drill front. It doesn't have a lot of moldings on it. You know, these are things that I look at when I'm choosing my finish, is there's not a lot of stuff for me to accentuate on this piece. These screws are kind of stripped out. Did I just put that screw down there? Oh, you another one. <laughs> so weird. Oh, Sheila says your hair looks great. Thank you, Sheila. <coughs> well, Sorry for shaking the camera. I'm going to have to do a live pretty soon for like a hair styling company. That'll be interesting. I think they maybe thought when they looked at my name, Brushed by Brandy, they thought it meant a hairbrush. And they don't know what really means paintbrush, and I know nothing about hair. I'm just offended they didn't reach out to me. <laughs> Because <laughs> you have to have Why is that hair. funny? Sorry, I love you. <laughs> um, Sheila, you know what you're on? Thank you, too. I got mail from Sheila, and Sheila makes adorable pet collars and was nice enough to send me one for our dog. And it's really cute. She's wearing it. She doesn't know anything about it, but she's wearing it. So this piece is made by Dixie, which is a fairly reputable brand. It was big. You know, this is probably... 1950s or 60s, late 50s, let's see if it's marked. Um, no, sometimes some brands are good about marking their dates, but most are not. So just to travel back in time a little bit, the uh, stripper you, you were using? Yes, what? I use a harsh chemical stripper when I want to take the clear coat off. So I used, that was called Clean Strip, but Jasco is another brand. I mean, I'm not advocating any brand. You just put the harsh chemical stripper, the you know, soft, gentle, all natural stuff. It really is soft and gentle. It just doesn't get the job done as fast. You saw that. I was able to scrape that off in what, you know, five minutes. I still have a little bit more to do to clean it up really well. But um, I wanted to give you guys the gist of getting that clear coat off. Um, that I do that first before I move on and start working on the body. So I hate doing these prep videos, you guys. They're not, they're not, glamorous or anything. This is my least favorite part of working on furniture. But I want to teach you guys the how and more importantly the why. How do you prep a piece and why do you prep it that way? So that is my goal with doing this on camera. So now all of my poles are off. Um, another thing I'll talk about is about choosing a piece, choosing furniture. So this has some damage, but it's all cosmetic. It's all stuff that I'm going to cover up with a coat of paint. It's got some scratches here. Had a lot of scratches in the top. I took those off by um, removing that clear coat. They're not into the wood. Um, so when I choose to bring a piece home, I look at that condition. My personal preference, sometimes the stuff that's free is free for a reason. It's too good to be true. It probably is, right? Um, so I will pass up pieces that are in bad condition because they just require too much prep work. And I don't like doing this part. So maybe spending 20, 30, $40 more on a piece sometimes. Um, I equate it to, well, that's money. I, I could have paid somebody to prep a piece for me. So if it saves me on the prep work and I'm bringing home pieces that are in better condition, that's my preference. I skip stuff that smells like cigarette smoke I skip stuff that um, smells like pet urine. It's not that they can't be fixed, but they are really hard things to fix. And so I just skip them completely. I don't want to send a customer home with that. Um, so there are some things I just prefer not to do. Um, but I do try to choose pieces that are in reasonably good condition. So a couple of quick questions for you. Yes, sir. How do you clean wax off of a piece? or dried stripper? If um, dried stripper, you can clean off of a piece by putting a fresh coat of stripper on. Put a coat of stripper over. So like if this starts to dry and get crusty, um, if I try to sand it, it's gonna gum up my sandpaper, but I can just put another coat of stripper on it 
and strip the stripper, if that makes sense. And I'll just scrape it right back off. Um, getting wax off of a piece. Dixie Belle waxes are water-based waxes. So Dixie Belle waxes are especially easy to clean off. They, they have soap and water cleaner. Um, but if you're stripping back old cured wax, and it's an oil-based, you can use um, mineral spirits, which is a hardware store item. You can get it at Home Depot. Okay, I'm starting out with a rag, and it's fairly clean on the rag. Hmm. But I'm going to show you guys. Yeah, rags in my house are really our old laundry. This is an old white t-shirt. This is what I'm getting off of this piece. It is disgusting. That was with one tiny white one here. So I'm going to... I might even go over this twice because, um, oh gosh, I just wiped it away. It is literally dripping red. Can you guys see that? Can you see the drips in the wood? If this, like I told you before, oh, over here is a good spot. The tannins in this wood are notorious for bleeding. So if you see stuff like this, it's dripping red. You want to, you're, you're going to think, oh, my piece is just really dirty. This is not that dirty. This, I mean, that would be like nicotine dripping. It's not that dirty. That is tannins coming through my piece. The moisture pulls it out. So what's in your spray bottle? So I'm sorry. Um, this is Dixie Belle White Lightning. And White Lightning is a cleaning product. It's, um, it's a Dixie Belle cleaner. It comes granulated and I mix it into a spray bottle. Um, there's ingredients or there's um, instructions on the container of white lightning. You just mix it into water and then I can use this through several cleanings. So white lightning is a very effective cleaner. You, you, you saw how quickly it cut through and started pulling those stains off. So if you guys wanted to paint this piece white, I mean, you can see this is what would be coming through your white paint. And it would start turning your white paint pink and yellow and all kinds of crazy colors because that wood is bleeding into your paint. So is there a reason to not remove the drawers in this process? Um, mo you can, yeah, because eventually I'm going to need to clean inside the piece and oil the glides and whatnot. But because I'm showing you guys on camera, if I had the drawers out, it would be really hard to show you working on the face of them. So for me here today, it's easier to just leave them in the dresser. But yeah, you want to clean these really well, and if that's easier for you to take them out, by all means, take them out. And just really quick, can you guys let me know as far as the clarity of the video? Just to make sure we're uh, on the same page here. So I just sprayed it again because I want this clean. I mean, this is nasty. It's uh. totally nasty. I want this clean. Um, I should be wearing gloves also. Um, and I'm going to get my fingernails and ride this little crevice right here. Get anything that might be in that little crevice. <laughs> See? <I don't> <laughs> is that my old shirt? <laughs> it's actually one It's your, probably it's my one new your, one. It's one of your new ones. Yeah. I took it Tell off me what you one. think of me. And next we're going to use Sean's toothbrush for cleaning. The oh, legs. I thought you already did. So this is also where my um, scooter comes in handy because you can see, like, I barely have to move. I can just scoot back and forth on the floor and get all the way. Million across. dollar item right there. Okay. Once I've cleaned the body with my white lightning and I have this, now it's tie-dye. Oh, sweet. It's Here, disgusting. hold on. Let me put it on. Now I will take clean water. This is just a, a spray bottle of clean water. And I want to wash away the cleaning residue from the front of this. So this is just plain water. And I'm going to do one last pass and get rid of that cleaning residue. It's like you're on a row machine. <laughs> I should be on the crew team, huh? In my spare time. Yeah. We get that? Oh, I don't know, but my kids go to summer camp at our local college at Sac State where the crew team practices. Well, my kids are growing on crew. The crew team is hardcore. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, we're going to be decoupaging this piece. 
And decoupage means that I'm gonna adhere paper to the front, decorative paper. So it gives you an extra um, added detail to a piece. Um, and it's actually really easy to do. But I wanted to give you guys some paper options. I have a few choices. And each one would have different paint color options too. So the first one I have here is a plaid. I thought would be kind of cool. Um, this is a gift wrap. I just picked this up at Target, but it's a nice quality gift wrap. It's not, don't use dollar store gift wrap for this. This is a nice heavy gift wrap. So I thought this would be really pretty on the front of here. Maybe with some gold poles and some gold dipped feet. So this is one choice. I would use this paper and I would pull out the green and the black that are in it. With Dixie Belle Caviar is the black. And then Dixie Belle Palmetto would be gorgeous with this. So I think this is, I don't know, this is a really fun choice. I like this one a lot. The green and black plaid. So going back a second, what did you use to clean this with? I used Dixie Belle White Lightning. It's a cleaning product that you mix into a spray bottle. Um, and it ate through all of that, you know, gross nastiness. In fact, let's see if I can show this on camera. I'm going to move this piece. I don't know if you can tell the difference between the front of this and the side, the difference in color. Can you see how it kind of um, took some of that color off? And it. Uh, well, it's funny because you can just see it based on where the pools were. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, this is what the sides look like here. So you can kind of see, I mean, it it cleaned through, it cleaned through the ring of grime that was sitting around all the poles. Um, we got into these crevices here. So I'm gonna keep going and do the sides before I um, continue around the body. You wanna do your whole entire piece. So I showed you one paper option. We're not gonna do the papering tonight. I'm gonna post a poll on my page and see which one you guys wanna use. So go to my page after this and I'll, I'll put a poll up and you guys can weigh in on what color paper you wanna use. This is a gift wrap from Spoonflower, which makes custom papers. So this is a really like bold um, floral pattern with a white background, some greens. It's got some like holy guacamole in here. So for this one, let me show you what colors I would use. I would use the main body color as Dixie Belle Cotton, which is a nice pure white like the background. And then I would add in some accents of evergreen. So that's another really pretty option. I like this one too. This is why I can't decide. I'm really using you guys. Now when you're using the white lightning, do you have to come back and wipe anything off with it? Yes. Is there any residue? Yes. Afterwards I used a clean coat of water and I just wiped off the cleaning residue. So afterwards you want to go back over it with, with um, just clear water and wipe the cleaning residue off. I gotta say, I think it's just cool that you can take paper and do this stuff with it. I know, and then you, so what you're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an um, adhesive to adhere it to the front of this. By the way, it will not be Mod Podge. If you have Mod Podge, throw it away. We're not using an iron. The iron method is way too complicated. I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to do decoupage. If you come back and watch me next week, because I'm not gonna have time tonight. Wanted to show you the prep, but we're gonna be putting paper on this and I'm not using Mod Podge and I'm not using an iron. I'm gonna show you a way easier way to do it. Um, so the last option is this floral here. Like I said, I'm gonna post these on my page so you guys have better pictures of them. So this has a blue background. It's got some soft pink flowers with some green leaves in it. This is probably my least favorite option for this piece. Can I just go back really quick as far as this cleaner? Because it's coming up because of what's written on the bottle. Oh, oh, oh. You know why I have that on there? <clears throat> so it says it's marked TSP slash white lightning. White lightning is formulated with TSP. White lightning is formulated with TSP. So trisodium phosphate is a very hardcore chemical cleaner. Works great. White Lightning takes that hardcore chemical cleaner and gives you the effectiveness and softens it a little bit so it's not, um, it does have a slight odor, but it's nowhere near like using tri pure trisodium phosphate. So that's why I have it marked like that. I have children and I've taught them to know to come read my spray bottles. So the water ones are marked water. This is marked TSP, White Lightning. The vinegar is marked vinegar. Um, 
So that's what that is, because that is used in the formulation of it. Um, so with the blue floral paper, I would probably go with Dixie Belle Stormy Seas. That's a really pretty match. And then maybe some collard greens to pull out the uh, green in the leaves. Possibly even some Spanish moss. Now Gary responded saying he used your form of decoupage and he won't go back. Oh my gosh, see, right? I have a video, you guys, on my YouTube channel. And actually it was on the post um, that I just put up today on my Facebook page. has a link to it. <laughs> I've tried, I tried decoupage in all the methods that are out there on Facebook and whatever, telling you how to do it. They're awful. They're awful. I hated putting tissue paper on. I could not get it right. It was always a mess. Um, go watch my video. So video. just quickly going back, your papers, where did you get these from? Okay. So I just love the practicality. Yeah. These are, these are um, gift wrap from spoonflower.com. So what Spoonflower is, it's a custom paper company, and they make papers in thousands of designs. If you want to get totally lost on the internet, go browse papers at Spoonflower. Thousands. You can also make your own paper design. So if you have a pattern that you like and can't find it on there already, you can design your own paper. You can put your logo on a paper. You can... Um, you can, they also do wallpaper and fabrics too. So I use their gift wrap and this gift wrap is about $15 a roll. So it's pricey for gift wrap, but it's beautiful for decoupage. It also has a repeat on it. So I can use it over a large scale like this. And if I need to cut it, I can match up seams. Not all papers have a repeat pattern. I think that's pretty crucial. Yes. Um, this one is a gift wrap from Target. It's slightly thinner than the um, spoon flower paper, but it's still a nice quality. This is the, um, what's the Chip and Joanna line? Hearth and Hand with Magnolia gift wrap. So it's not like the, you know, $2 birthday gift wrap. This is a, the, a, a nice quality gift wrap. It's a fairly heavy paper. Um, so that's what these are. I would steer clear of like the super cheap papers. It's worth it to invest in nice quality papers to get a really pretty decoupage. But you can use tissue papers, um, gift wrap, um, posters, like posters from Hobby Lobby are a great option. Fabric? Um, fabric, yeah, you can stick fabric on. Um, there's a little spot right here that I just feel like has something on it that I wanna clean better. I'm gonna do that really quick. And then I'm gonna go back and rinse it back with water because I just put more cleaner on. Just had a little sticky spot of something that was stubborn. Okay, and now I feel confident that these floor prints are nice and clean. So I'm gonna come back with Dixie Belle Boss. So Boss stands for Blocks, Odors, Stains, Stops, Bleed Through, B-O-S-S. -S. So this will block odors. So where I said, if you have a piece that has cigarette smoke on it, um, this will, it, it's gonna seal off that wood and the smell is inside the, the wood, the wood is porous. So this will seal off your wood um, in my case, I'm using it to seal off the tannins that are in the wood so they don't bleed through my paint. Can I see the front of that real quick yeah. again? Because I think it says Sean underneath <laughs> boss. <laughs> <laughs> Your reading skills are lacking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're the cameraman. A face um, for radio, sorry. So this piece, um, I need to block the stains on it. It's not overly slick to where I feel like I need slick stick, which is also another Dixie Belle um, primer. So I'm gonna put a coat of Boss on this. Boss comes in clear and in white. And the way you would decide what you want, which whether you want clear or white, is what color are you gonna paint your piece, number one. If you're gonna paint it white, I would use white Boss because it saves you a coat of paint. Basically gives you a primer, puts a coat of white on your piece. Um, can you use boss inside the drawer? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It comes in clear. For example, if you've got a piece that smells like cigarette smoke, it's going to smell like cigarette smoke inside the drawer. You can seal your the entire body of your piece with boss and it will encapsulate that and keep it inside. Um, and the clear goes on nice and clear. So it would just give your the inside of your drawers a nice light sheen. Um, so I have clear here. Um, 
I'm gonna open the container and I'm gonna stir this really well. This is just a paint stir stick. I'm gonna dig it, or dip it in and pull up whatever might have settled on the bottom of this container. Sabrina. Now, can you make the, because it's in clear now, can you uh, actually make it a top coat? Um, no, I would like not. Like a final use, coat? I would not use Boss as a clear, as a top coat. Um, I don't think it's gonna give you the, the protection for wear. Um, that you that you would want like a regular clear coat would it's not intended for that purpose so if Dixie Bell's on and they have any other recommendation but I wouldn't personally do that so it's gonna go, it's gonna go on a milky white this is boss and clear but you see it goes on a milky white which is nice because I can tell where I put it um, and um, boss is a water-based primer so I can use my nice Dixie Bell brushes to lay this on Whereas a lot of the stain blocking primers you get from the hardware store are oil based and they will destroy your brushes. So I can lay this on with a nice quality brush and still feel like I can go wash it out afterwards. And that just helps me get it on nice and smooth. It just glides on like a paint glides on. You can see I'm not, it's not setting up too quickly. Well, sorry, what I'm trying to do is Debbie mentioned it started to get blurry and I'm wondering oh. if it's because of the lines. So I'm trying to come in at a different angle. Okay. So I'm going to get some, I'm just getting this nice and even. See, it goes on white so I can tell where I've got it, but it's still going to dry clear. Another reason if you were to choose white boss would be if you want to distress your piece and you want to see that layer of white underneath. So for this one, I don't plan to distress this part of it. Um, you know, maybe the sides or whatever, but I, if I do, I want it, I want to expose. Okay. And we're back. Okay. Um, so I can tell right off the bat, I'm gonna need two coats of boss. I don't know if this is gonna translate on camera, but I can see this spot right here. My boss is starting to yellow. I will apply boss until it stops coming through. This means I still have a little bit coming through. So I don't wanna see that. If my boss is discoloring, there's a chance my paint could discolor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely need two coats of this. Um, we'll get this one on tonight, and I'll get another one on before we come back on next week. Brenda says you make everything look so easy. I think she was complimenting oh me. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brenda. I really got a really nice message today. You guys always send me nice messages, but some of them just really touch me. Um, just the appreciation for how much goes into making these videos to you guys. Now, do you sand in between these layers? Um, for any I reason? I, I, I wouldn't even call it sanding. I don't like to call it sanding. Scuffing? It, yeah, I, I just, I'm going to go back with a sanding sponge, a fine grit sanding sponge. This is a 220 grit. And I'm just going to do a single pass, just single pass over my, and that's just to knock down, like, you know, this little bump right here. Um, knock down any brush strokes that settle in or dust that might have got stuck in. I'm not trying to take any of this coating off. I'm just trying to smooth it out. Now the consistency, if you were to describe the consistency of the boss, is it more like a gator hide or um, it doesn't appear as as thick as the paint? Let's see. Yeah, you're probably somewhere in the middle between the two. Um, it's probably like gator hide. Gator hide is kind of a thicker top coat. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not as thick as the paint, but it um yeah, probably the consistency of gator hide. Um, actually, all of the Dixie Bell clear coats are a little bit thicker, which is what I like about them because they go on and they stay in place. Um, but it but it glides on fairly easily. It's not sticking. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna put it out there. Um, Zinser Bin is another. It's a really popular type of stain blocking primer. Please tell me if you guys have ever used it, because once you use it and then try Dixie Bell Boss, you will never go back again. Um, Bin is um, super watery. It runs like... Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. It On a vertical surface, it's horrible. Yeah, it runs. It smells terrible. It's got a very strong chemical smell. It's oil-based, so it destroys your brushes. Um, it's everything Dixie or Boss is not. So I know you guys are going to see a lot, like people saying to use Zins or Bin. And I've used Zinser Bin. It blocks the stains, but it's horrible to use. It has a learning curve, because then all those drips and stuff that you see on your, um, when it goes on, 
you know, all will show through your paint coat. So you have, it's just, it's tough stuff. And what so brush are you using? I'm using the Dixie Bell Mini. Um, this is one of their synthetic brushes. It lays on a really nice coat. It gets you nice coverage because it's got this two inch bristle on it. Um, if I had to choose, someone asked me this question today actually, which made me think of it. If I had to choose my top three Dixie Bell brushes in order, they even told me in uh -oh, order. Uh-oh, rank them. Yeah, I had to rank them. This is my favorite. The Dixie Bell Mini. My next favorite is the Dixie Bell Oval Medium. I like that one for blending. I like this for laying paint on. I like the oval medium for blending. And my third choice would be the bell brush. And the bell brush is a natural bristle brush, but I think it's good to have a natural bristle brush in your arsenal. Okay. So with the mini, the oval medium, and the bell brush, you get synthetic brushes and a natural brush in there. So you've got your, my, those are my top three brushes. If I had to choose any, Honestly, that's probably, you know, 90% of what I use for those three brushes. So this is not sticking at all. I'm not, um, I'm able to come back and rebrush it, and work it out a little bit. I try to get it fairly even. You guys will notice that um, if you have unevenness in your top coats and your primers, it's going to show through. I try to get them on fairly even. I can see it starting to dry like over here. So do you paint. typically leave the drawers in when you paint? No, I don't, but I'm doing it for you guys because it would be really hard to show you this with the drawers out on the floor. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue this. I'm gonna put a coat, I'm gonna clean the sides that I didn't do on camera. I'm gonna finish this coat of boss and get it all around this whole body. And then when you guys join me next week, we're gonna put some paint on this and we're gonna put some paper on this. So that's where the magic happened. And this part sucks. Now, just really quick, going back to brushes and whatnot. How, sorry, I got my fingers in the way of the camera. <laughs> um, how do you clean them? Are they easy to clean? Yeah, absolutely. So the um, Dixie Bell Synthetic Bristle Brushes have nylon and polyester bristles. They clean amazingly well. So um, this is a newer one, but I've got some older brushes and they don't get the paint build up, you know, down here like some do. And that wears your brushes, um, but these clean fabulously well. I will rinse this in water. I have a, um, you know, I always talk about this. It's a makeup cleaning mitt that I put on my hand and I will brush the brush back and forth under running water until it runs clear. And then um, from there, I will sit the bristles in a little dish of water. So I'll take a dish like this and sit it overnight in water. Um, and let it continue to run out. I don't use any brush cleaning soaps unless I'm cleaning out um, a wax brush or something more stubborn. Um, I prefer to just clean my brushes with water. I don't like the buildup that some soaps can leave in a brush. Um, they get crusty and tend to wear, So my experience. Two more questions. Why use this over Gator Hide? Um, this is not, Gator Hide is a clear coat. Gator Hide is a sealer to finish your piece off. Gator Hide is not a primer. So I'm I'm not trying to finish this piece. I'm blocking stains with a primer. And um, then next, how long do you let this dry before you put anything on top of it? So I do everything overnight, overnight, overnight. So I will do, if I was working on this piece and wasn't doing it on camera for you guys, I would do everything overnight. So I would do this, wait overnight, put my coat of paint on. Wait overnight, put my second coat of paint on. Wait overnight, put my paper on. Um, everything is overnight. Wait overnight, put my top coat on. Um, to where I can, I usually finish a piece in about four or five days, depending on how many steps that piece has. Um, but waiting overnight in between each step. And then as far as the bleed through or bleeding, does this stop it, period? Yes, yeah, it will. Um, this is gonna need a second coat, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll put a second coat over the whole body of it. But but yeah, Dixieville Boss is, is a very, very effective for bleed through. So, you know, um, I may even be using darker colors on this and I would still want to block the bleed through for this, even, even under black, because black can discolor just like any other color can. It could turn, you know, yellowy splotches in your black, just the same as a white could. They'll, they'll be more visible in a white, 
but a black can discolor just the same. So no matter what color I choose to use, I would, I would definitely on this style of piece want to block those tannins. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to finish putting this gloss on. And when you guys join me next week, I'm going to have this ready for paint to go on. Um, and we will put paint on and then I'm going to put up a poll on my page. So you guys, please go over to my page. Give me a little bit of time to get it up. And I'm going to give you the paper choices um, and the color combinations that would go with them. And um, tell me what look you want for this piece. By the way, I may still pick the one I want. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? You know what I've learned, like doing my house and stuff. I, I asked you guys a lot of questions while I was building my house. Ninety-nine percent of the time, you guys come back and agree with what I, with me going with my gut. So I have my gut, but I'm curious what you guys come back with. So I'm gonna put these up with the color choices, and I hope you guys will come back and um, tell me which one you guys want to use. And you guys want to give away some paint? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what are you here for? You That's what I'm here for. Come watch me, right? Let's do this. All right, so if you've liked this post, liked my page at Brushed by Brandy and shared this post. Um, and I'm gonna come over and do some scrolling. Oh, that looks terrible. Hmm. Thanks, Val, your pin post is in my way. Okay, I have a winner. Tracy. Canzanetta, did I get it? Okay. I'm guessing, I mean. Okay. Well, sometimes I misread it, but okay. Tracy Canzanetta, if I got your name right, if you're on, come on and say hi. You just won an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint in your choice of color. Congratulations to Tracy, you guys. Um, Tracy, message me on my page at Brushed by Brandy. I will get all your information from you and you can choose your color and we'll get it out to you. So you guys, I'm back live. I will be back every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, um, 9 p.m. Eastern because I'm in California. So here it's only six o'clock. The sun is still shining here right now. So I know it's kind of late for some of you guys, but Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern and every Thursday, we're gonna keep working this piece and somewhere in the next few weeks, we'll have a finished look on it. So thank you guys for stopping by. Have a good night. I'll see you next week. <laughs>